Coming up next on Tech News Today, IKEA buys TaskRabbit, and it's going to help you assemble its furniture a little bit easier, maybe a little more expensively, though. YouTube is making it harder for new content creators to make money on YouTube via Patreon. Is it possible to get FM radio on an iPhone? Ajit Pai from the FCC thinks that it should be. GoPro has a new action camera for you and tons of your feedback. All that more coming up next on Tech News Today. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today, episode 1863, recorded Thursday, September 28th, 2017. This episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident that you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. This is a show where we, Jason and I, create a full-length theatrical... Feature film. Fe feature film about the tech news. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say a theatrical musical because I oh. was singing, but it was it's a full-length <laughs> feature film, also a musical. Yeah, it's it's based on the hit Broadway show, Tech News Today, the musical. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we've and, all seen in Broadway. Yes, uh, and it starts with an overture that we like to call Ikea. Oh, it does. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite overture. Oh, wait, I'm Megan Maroney. I'm Jason Howell. Let's do this, Megan. Swedish furniture giant Ikea. <laughs> I just made that up, and I have no singing voice, so I apologize to everyone out there. Uh, Ikea just bought TaskRabbit, the San Francisco-based on-demand company that finds you someone to help you do your stuff, like, for example, assemble your Ikea furniture. According to a press release, TaskRabbit will continue to work as an independent company. Uh, TaskRabbit now operates in the U.S. and in London, and it's been around for nearly a decade. The biggest question I have for you, Jason, yes. uh, is why buy furniture that needs to be put together if you're going to pay someone to put it together? You can also buy furniture that is already put together. Maybe the, the cost savings is so severe, so significant that you still come out ahead. I don't know. I mean, I've bought a lot of furniture uh, as of late, mm -hmm. as we have a new house. And there's a lot of cheap places to buy furniture. And, um, you know, to You're be probably fair- probably going to get better quality furniture too, from doing that. E maybe, yes. Um, yeah, like you could go to a store, like a, a furniture store, like a used furniture store. That's yeah, already that's put true. together. There's, you know, indentations in the chairs. Someone's yeah. already sat in it and warmed it up for you. But yes. yeah, I mean, I, as you know, am not a fan of Ikea. I, uh, I like- TaskRabbit, like they created the gig economy in a lot of ways. Uh, their CEO, Stacey Brown, Brown Philpot, uh, will remain at the head of, the, there's only 60 people that work full time at the company. Gosh, that's all? Yeah. I mean, there's not six, there's more than 60 TaskRabbits. Okay. Oh, Those okay. are, they're not full time. Employees. I was like, wow, that's a really small team. <laughs> no, the go, gig, go they're, Task they're, Rabbit. <laughs> they're gig employees. Got it. Um, I, ha I tried to use TaskRabbit once. Um, and it was very expensive. Yeah. I found it to be very expensive. And I don't know if that's just because there weren't, there wasn't a lot of competition out here in Petaluma. And, you know, I've read a lot about it. Oh, TaskRabbit is just for lazy people. Um, this was for a friend who was sick and I wanted someone to go clean her house. You know, a bunch of us were trying to, you know, get money together so she wouldn't have to clean her house herself. And I found it to be, yeah, way more expensive than, than just other uh, house cleaners that we could find. Hmm. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Like I was, I was trying to do some poking around to see... To, to find if there's any sort of profiles out there that's easy to get to without like actually filling out a form on TaskRabbit's site for a job, which is what you'd have to do in order to get people to bid for your job. And I found a few things around where people who listed as things that they were able to do um, included assembling furniture. So I imagine this would kind of fall into that category and their prices range between 35 to around $65. That was just based on like two or three of them that I found. So that's by no means an exhaustive search, but like when you consider Ikea's furniture, like the hem, hem is hems dresser that's here. It's, you know, it's a eight drawer dresser, $249. 
um, tack on to that. How long do you think it takes to put something this big together? Like, mm -hmm. is that an hour? Is that two hours? I'm not sure. All I know is I hate putting together Ikea furniture. And if, if I have to pay like $35 for someone to do it for me, I'm not saying that I would necessarily do that because sometimes it's really nice to not spend extra for that sort of stuff. I'd certainly consider it though. It really just depends on how busy you are, I suppose. Well, um, I feel like that's why I had children. So my- uh... <laughs> Well, that's true. <laughs> Your children are old enough to do that. Yes. I would be very afraid challenging my children uh, putting together a, an eight-drawer dresser. Got to get them young. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I have no doubt that they would try, and, and maybe they could do, um, but I'm pretty sure there would be dents along the way. It would not be a perfect assembly. Well, I, yeah, TaskRabbit and Ikea have been working together for a year, so they probably, it's not like, I, I'm sure they have a system where they say, like, yeah. if you want the Billy bookcase, it costs you this much to have someone assemble it. Um, I'm sure there's probably a known amount that they charge you. It's not just like, oh, how long is it going to take you? Because I knew it would take me five days and cost me my marriage. So that, you know, that that's right. different, so... Burke says Ikea would have to double, at least, the store size, dot, dot, dot. Also, Ikea prices are based on unassembled furniture. Well, yes, exactly. So then you tack in the labor required via TaskRabbit to assemble it. And does that price then equal a similar piece of furniture at a store that's already assembled? Or is it still coming in less than that? I mean, you know, Ikea furniture isn't the highest quality furniture either, so... You know, maybe you can get a better deal and just get better quality furniture. Yeah. Well, we've been uh, doing some shopping on Wayfair, which is pretty cheap. I don't know where they came from, but they're just like uh, the the Amazon of furniture or the mm -hmm. Target of furniture. And um, things are, aren't are made as well as a place like Pottery Barn, for example, but sure. they're way cheaper. Um, and often you have to put them together. And, oh, okay. you know, that isn't sort of advertised like with Ikea you know what you're getting into but mm -hmm. with Wayfair like oh it's like that I have to put that chair together myself and it turns out it was way easier um so yeah I I recommend it I think they're this this Wayfair place is going going places they need to find their own task rabbit to buy maybe they and they had great customer service we bought um a uh a chair there it scraped up our wood floors and I just told them that and they were like, okay, we'll just keep it. We don't need it. And they refunded me the money. But dang, <laughs> there's the headline. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't abuse that, please. Uh, <laughs> YouTube is making some changes that affect creators on the Patreon uh, crowdfunding platform. Going forward, creators are being asked to join YouTube's partners program in an effort to battle abusive and inappropriate content on YouTube's video site. However, Many of these creators, Patreon creators, aren't very happy about this uh, with the new request because YouTube's policy states that creators can't apply until they've reached 10,000 public channel views, which might not harm creators who already have a really healthy following, let's say, but will make it very difficult for up-and-comers to gain traction. Uh, it, normally, what they would do, at least recently, they would link out externally to their own Patreon destinations uh, for, for ways of making money. Uh, YouTube made kind of the monetization rules more difficult very recently. There was all that all that stuff that happened with inappropriate content and ads being served on it. So they made some changes uh, and that just made the whole thing more difficult. So a lot of these up and coming Patreon or content creators then turned to Patreon to be able to kind of make you know, make their living off of that content. If they're now less than 10,000 total views, monetization is, no, is not allow, is not offered for them uh, if they're linking to Patreon. So that could really affect them. Yeah, they're not, you're, they're not allowed to link to Patreon. They're not allowed to link their, to their own sites. They're not allowed to link to any merchandising that they're selling. So, uh, I mean, I guess there are a lot of small uh, YouTubers, small content creators that don't have that 10,000 total views, but they're able to make some money. They have a small audience right. and it works for them. And it's unfortunate that it's uh, not going to work anymore. Well, that and that's kind of the beauty of, of Patreon and, uh, you know, what we've realized over the years with making money on the internet is that you don't necessarily need an insanely huge following. You just need a very dedicated small following. You know, if you have a thousand people, let's say, that are really interested in what you're doing, that are willing to pitch X amount of dollars towards you, like that's not a huge audience by any stretch, you know, compared to like what we're used to seeing with like TV and, and movies and, you know, the fan bases around those things, but a very active, 
involved thousand person audience can actually make someone a very healthy living, you know, and, and this stuff like this just makes that a lot more challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Conte, uh, Patreon's CEO, uh, also said in a tweet, he feels like this is hurtful to creators. He's looking into it on his end. Who knows if he's going to be able to, to work anything out, but he is very pro content creator. That's why he created Patreon. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, a noble thing to get behind. I, I like the idea that people can create content even to small audiences and still make, you know, a decent living from it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. FCC Chairman Ajit Pai says Apple should flip the switch on the iPhone's FM radio, especially if the company cares about people's safety in natural disasters. The Federal Communications Commission says the radios that are already present in iPhones could have helped millions of people access life-saving radio information in the wake of hurricanes Harvey, Maria, and Irma. Samsung, LG, Motorola, and HTC all sell some smartphones with unlocked radios, but critics of Apple's choice say that Apple doesn't unlock theirs because they don't want people to have free access to the radio uh, so that they'll pay for services like Apple Music. So wireless networks, of course, often go down in emergencies. So Congress is also fighting for this, calling for Apple to do the right thing. Uh, and because they're mo mostly aiming this, Apple isn't the only one that has turned off their radios, but they have 40% of the smartphone market in the U.S., uh, so what do you think about this? Well, I mean, Apple has responded to this they, very recently in the last couple of hours. And they responded to this saying that the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8 models do not have FM radio chips or FM antennas in them. And as such are not, you know, it's just not possible to do this. I, I assume if they're saying that, that that's true. Um, but I do know that I've, I've heard a lot about this, at least on the Android side, Qualcomm chips, Intel chips have FM tuners baked into them already. And it's just a matter of, you know, th those being there for other purposes, enabling Wi-Fi, cellular connectivity. And yes, on some devices, they've been opening it up so that you can use uh, FM radio, which I don't really hear a lot of people, you know, th there's not a whole lot of buzz around people that get those phones saying, this is the number one reason that I have the phone. So it's really hard for me to believe the argument that having an FM tuner active on a device is going to mean that people don't buy streaming services. Streaming services is just the way it is now. And I don't think that it replaces it. It certainly doesn't when you get in your car, everybody that has a car has, you know, has probably a stereo that's capable of getting AM and FM. They still have streaming services. So, so why do why. you think they, they turn it off? Why do why don't you think they turn them on? Um, that's a good question. I mean, may, maybe it is. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that it, it isn't because of that fear. I'm just saying that that's a stupid fear. <laughs> I don't think that there's, I, I would be really surprised if because a phone had an FM tuner in it, people suddenly stopped, you know, enjoying any of the modern conveniences of the internet, you know, from be it unlimited catalogs of on-demand streaming. Like, I just think there's a whole lot of other benefits that come from that. And I don't think FM would make that much of a dent, but hey, they probably know a lot more about that from a marketing standpoint than I do. I just think it's kind of silly. Do you think that maybe it drains battery very quickly? And that's something that they, because they're really concerned with that. They've been doing all kinds of things like on the, um, on iOS 11 in the notification center, there's a, um, there's a icon for Wi-Fi and for Bluetooth. And when you press it, it doesn't do what you'd expect it to do. Um, it doesn't totally turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It just disconnects the devices that you have connected. And the reason they keep it on is they assume that you're going to want to, um, you know, have it on. You're going to forget how to turn it back on or something. So there's all kinds of things that they do because they think they know better. Yeah. And I don't think Tim Cook is like thinking like, oh, let's get some I more know. Apple yes. Music oh. subscriptions by making everyone <laughs> totally unsafe after a hurricane. They've got to have a that. reason I just wonder what it is. Yeah, well, I mean, and maybe their reason is that it's not possible. That's That seems to be what they're saying about the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8 is that actually you are mistaken, Pi, Agit Pi, that it cannot do this. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe their definition of cannot do that is it, this is different than actually technically being impossible. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there is some sort of a battery hit as well for the devices that do it. I mean, it, you know, it's going to use more battery than not. I don't know how thirsty it is from that regard, mm -hmm. uh, though. Burke might know. He says, what about earlier versions of the iPhone? Well, that's a good question. They point out 7 and 8, so maybe the earlier versions have different chips inside of them. Uh, they can turn on FM radios for all the other ones, but they only mentioned it yeah. 7 and 8. Right? Yeah, that's because everybody's upgraded, Burke. Nobody has the older phones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, what they added was, what they said was users can dial emergency... 
emergency services and access medical ID card information directly from the lock screen. We enable government emergency notifications ranging from weather advisories to Amber Alerts. You know, the iPhone 7 and 8 do not have radio chips in them, nor they have antenna designed to support FM signals. So it's not possible to enable FM reception. So, I mean, I guess to Burke's point, he's saying it's it's uh, kind of unfair them to them to admit how many phones out there that aren't mm-hmm. iPhone 7 and iPhone 8 that are out there in the wild that they could turn it on. Well, and why that's not? True. That's true. Another thing also to keep in mind on this is that a lot of times in these sorts of implementations of of integrating FM radio into something like a smartphone. Uh, what do they use as an antenna? Use a headphone. Your headphones mm. plugged into the headphone jack that the iPhone does not have. So there, you know, maybe that's a part of it. Maybe technically it can do this, but it doesn't get any reception because the antenna would be routed through the headphone jack and the headphone jack no longer exists. It's done through their, you know, their proprietary port. And so maybe that's the thing. I don't know. Maybe they got rid of the headphone jack to drive subscriptions to Apple Music. Dun, dun, dun. Do you think? Do you think? No. Okay. All right. Well, it was, it was a shot. Uh, if you've been holding out for a hero till the end of the night, then GoPro has you covered with the next generation Hero 6 action camera. It looks largely similar to its predecessor, but offers big improvements on the inside, including 60 frames per second 4K video recording. That's an improvement in frames per second. 120 frames per second at 2.7K resolution and 240 frames per second at 1080p resolution, which is really good for action cam scenarios. Uh, That's double the previous iteration. Touch zoom is also now implemented for zooming in quickly on an object. Uh, They say it offloads three times faster than previously thanks to the GP1 processor inside better dynamic range, better low light performance, and uh, on sale today for $499. And I know you are big into action cameras. Yes. For I, all the all the, East, the the sports, the action sports that mm-hmm. you are involved with. Uh, yes. I, uh, I we, Our family has one GoPro and we, it's not a recent GoPro. And it was very handy. Uh, my kids like to strap it, on, strap it on their helmet when we are skiing. And mm-hmm. um, back in December, I fell and remember the ski hit me in the nose uh, <laughs> and my daughter had the GoPro. So uh, affixed to her helmet. It was very exciting because I could see her reaction. She was like climbing up and saying like, are you okay? Your face is all bloody. So it was fun. Oh so I have used- Well, that sounds fun. It, well, yeah. I have used the GoPro, but you know what kind of hero I'm holding out for? This Maybe. little hero right here who also has 4K video, 60 um, frames per second. Mount and I can carry her in my pocket. I'm not going to mount it to any helmet. Um, I love it. Uh, it costs more than this this uh, GoPro, but it also makes phone calls. Yeah. And it doesn't and get all- radio, sadly. Yeah, and you already have it. And I have so, it. You yeah. have to buy another one. Yeah, because that's, that's the big argument with GoPro. Like, is it going to be better than the phone you carry around in your pocket. And I think with GoPro, like it's just, it's a different category entirely, right? Like, yes, for every day, uh, walk around the earth and take pictures of things at, at random people like us, the phone in our pocket is going to be perfect. GoPro, I mean, as an action camera, it has a specific, very specific fan base of people, you know, uh, people involved in these sports. And that's just one example, but in these kind of very extreme things where they want a camera they can mount, that's going to be as good a quality as possible to, you know, pick it up so that they can relive it. They can post it, socialize it, whatever, uh, after the fact, and they don't have to worry about it because these things are also very durable or waterproof, all that kind of stuff. So it's a different market. They also have, um, they had mentioned at CES, the fusion 360 camera, their 360 degree camera. They now have, uh, uh, announced, that is going to be available in November for $699. And that's 5.2K spherical video at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second at 3K. And they announced some uh, software updates to the Karma drone as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. The Hero 6 obviously works with the Karma drone, GoPro's Karma drone. Is that song stuck in your head now? I'm holding, holding out for a hero to the end of the night. Yes. Yes. All right. Now it's stuck in your head, too. Up next, we answer a Santa Claus-sized bag of your feedback. But first, let's take a minute to thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, the sponsor of this episode. Uh, Rocket Mortgage is all about kind of bringing the mortgage process, the mortgage experience into the modern times. Things were pretty dated before. The whole thing needed a client-focused technological revolution to kind of bring it up to date. And that's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. 
Rocket Mortgage gives you the confidence that you need when it comes to buying a home or even refinancing your existing home loan, if you like. It's simple. It allows you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. It's convenient. Their trusted partners allow you to share your financial information with Rocket Mortgage at the touch of a button. It's also powerful. Whether you're looking to buy your first home or your 10th, Rocket Mortgage is able to perform thousands of calculations in seconds. And they base that all on your income, your assets, your credit. They take everything into consideration. And Rocket Mortgage analyzes all the home loan options for which you qualify to find the one that's just right for you. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash TNT. That's rocketmortgage.com slash TNT. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLS consumer access dot org number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of Tech News Today. It's time for some feedback. feedback. That was a little bit of singing. This is this is the middle of the musical. <laughs> yes, that feedback. was that was intermission. <laughs> yes. And now here we come back. Stephen from the UK writes that he's a new fan, uh, and I I like to always ask new fans how they find us because I'm always curious. Uh, and he wrote after the iPhone phone eight launched last week, I headed straight to YouTube to see what the usual tech YouTubers had to say. YouTube recommended Twit, and I'm very happy they did. Nice. Yourself and your colleagues are now familiar your faces and voices in my home. The banter you have with each other feels more personal. And as a viewer, I feel part of that. I'll be recommending Twit to my tech-loving friends. Addictive viewing. Thank you. Wow, that's awesome. I know. We're hoping that that it, uh, that's why we are so casual here. We're hoping that it feels like you're part of it because we think you are. Yeah, we're cash. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Sean wrote in, <laughs> wrote in regarding our discussion of the Atari box console. Sean agreed that the system is little more than a spruced up entry level PC tugging on the nostalgia heartstrings and priced too high between $250 to $300. He calls it ludicrous. Sean continued, it seems like a cash grab of the worst kind and something emblematic of what we would have seen from Nolan Bushnell uh, when he still ran the company desperately hoping that the mere nostalgia factor and name recognition of Atari would get people to pl to pay way more than a product is worth so that they can make a big payday and walk away with their check. There are companies that fade into obscurity and leave an indelible impression on their, on their fans. Companies with that leave their fans reminiscing about the good old days. Unfortunately, Atari is never content to allow that to happen, and instead, a long series of very weird missteps and just plain bad decisions along the way leaves them more as a cautionary tale and one of those companies you look back on and feel sad for instead of those fond memories. Ouch. There was more there. I, I kind of cut it down a little bit, but yeah, you can you can obviously sense the disappointment in Sean's words uh, about the Atari box, and I, I think... I think that's shared by a lot of people who saw this price tag and just felt like, you know, maybe you had something going based on the name, based on the brand, based on the ambition of the console to be, you know, they, they want it to be a little more than just an Atari a nostalgia box and to be able to include more and have possibility for more. But price the way it is, it's really hard to kind of take it on that footing because it's just... It's just overpriced, and it does, in some ways, it feels like a cash grab. I suppose we'll see more as we get closer what what is actually underneath the hood and, you know, if there's any reason to justify for that. But right now, it's really hard to believe that it is. Mm -hmm. so, I agree. I'm, I'm curious, though. I do want to play with it. I do want to see it. If anything, it would look really nice underneath my TV. Mm-hmm. Daniel from Milwaukee wrote in to say, yes, Megan, I watched to the end of your show. As you know, I like to uh, throw something in at the end and find out if you you listen all the way till the end. He says, uh, I am a cyclist and I was riding for the first time with a friend. And as we were going, there were a couple of cars and a couple of pedestrians that almost got us killed on the road. He was not happy and complaining and yelling, et cetera. Then he turned to me and said, how are you so calm? And I said, well, I assume the entire population of drivers and pedestrians are out to hurt me, so I never get surprised or agitated anymore. Uh, he is, of course, referring to my question that I asked at the end of episode 1857 is, I wanted to hear from you if you also assume that everyone is horrible and then, uh, and then just go from there, which I don't assume that, but I think algorithms should assume that everyone is up to no good. Yeah. And... Well then go from there. What so a, algorithms a, are people in cars if you're a cyclist. What a dire look, outlook on life though. Let's not, let's not live our lives thinking that everybody's horrible. I don't think that we should live our whole life thinking everybody's horrible. Just most of it. But 
I think if you're in a bike, I think if, or you're yeah, a pedestrian, so. assume a car is going to run you over. That's a good example. And if you are a developer of an algorithm, assume the algorithm is going, assume that people are going to be horrible. And then you have, the algorithm has to take care to protect against the horrible people out okay. there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go, go over, go overboard on uh, tightening it down to protect against the, all the horrible things that people can right. do uh, in it, to uh, as they interact with your product. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I should teach like a, a coding lesson on how you compare uh, an algorithm to uh, a pedestrian or a cyclist <laughs> and the cars are all the horrible people out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cars are often... No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, Jason, which is not to say that I wrote in, but another Jason wrote in to say... <laughs> Come on, you wrote this. Ah, okay, I did. Uh, I said... No, I didn't. <laughs> I was taken by Megan's talk about the iWatch being able to make phone calls and her need to be connected even on her frequent runs. I am a Garmin Phoenix owner as well as an Asus Zen watch owner. I willingly gave my Zen watch to my father-in-law since I found the watch to be fairly pointless. However... As an avid athlete, running, hiking, swimming, biking, etc., you will have to pry my phoenix from my cold, dead wrist. My wife loves, and it is mandatory, that I share the live track tracking feature of the phoenix. However, I really hate carrying my phone on my run because unlike Megan, I like the solitude of my many pursuits. That being said... I've never felt the need to make a phone call and I ignore all calls when being athletic, but I would love the ability to send tracking information and send texts via voice, the one feature I actually cared about on my Zen watch, without the phone. In short, I think LTE is a fantastic idea and, for that matter, if you can make phone calls, order toilet paper on Alexa, check on the dogs, kids, uh, with the house webcams, etc., then I think it would be very empowering. I agree. Mm -hmm. Except for now, every... Buddy's Amazon Echo just checked on the dogs and the kids. Oh, dang it. <laughs> but you said, said that, that you I? said the toilet paper before, so it was good. Because I don't think, I mean, whatever check on I the dogs or the kids yes. means, it's probably the camera opened in the kids' rooms or something like I that. I don't know how to check on your dogs. <laughs> uh, would you like me Yet. to not do that for you? Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. TNT's fan of the day is Sean from Delaware, who sent us this video of how he watches TNT while explaining how to fix Megan's magnet on the iPhone case wireless charging problem that she had. Let's watch and listen. Hi, Megan. Yes, unfortunate that it is to have to take off the case uh, in order to continue with the wireless charging. I do have to do that at night, uh, but it is convenient to have uh, the magnet uh, for the car. Uh, this is a Scotch model um, magnet piece, but it came with a plastic sheath that, uh, or sticker that can go onto the case itself. Uh, I can remove that sheath and put it onto a, uh, another case or another phone. Um, <clears throat> but at night, yes, I do have to take it off to make the wireless charging, but I can connect it to the cable still. I love the show and uh, hope you guys are doing great. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for sending that in. Okay, so if I understand correctly, wireless char wireless charging. Hey, go, you you had your time. Uh, wireless, and we appreciate it. Uh, wireless charging at night. In order to do the convenient wireless charging thing, you have to inconveniently remove the case. Is that what it is? Okay, so you don't have to normally remove the case, but I have inside my case this Kino magnet here that used to be right here where you could You'd see never that know. Crazy, yeah, you would <laughs> never know. So uh, unlike Sean, who had that kind of thing that you just peeled lightly off, mine was stuck pretty hard there. I peeled it off. I tried some goo be gone, which um, did not like this beautiful suede inside this brand new case. Yeah, it did not be gone at all. Um, but it, so a lot of people recommended that I just move it lower so that, so that the uh, Qi charging coil Oh, okay. Because it's right around here. It works sometimes, but oh. not all the time. Um, so I also have several other car mounts that I'm going to try next that people recommended. There's the one that goes on the air conditioner that clips in, but I really prefer the magnets. Yeah. Because the clips, they always, like, they, they never work as well as they should. They work for a while, and then they stretch and bend. Um, so I have some more that I'm going to try yeah, it's not that hard to just take the case off and charge it. Um, mostly, I'm just sad that I didn't put this all together, the wireless charging, and before I ruined the inside of my case. Because as Steve Jobs used to always say, like, you know what's inside. Like, even though nobody can see it, 
it's uh, you, you know what's inside, and you know that it doesn't look as good as it could. It I'm sad. S- scrambling to find the car mount that we have. It was one that Andy and Otko recommended a couple of years ago. And man, I can't remember. I can't find it in my email. Um, as a really good kind of uh, car mount, it's it's not the it's not the standard kind with like you know some of them you you fasten it close and it and it hugs the phone or mm-hmm. whatever. You actually it has it has like an X. Kind of. Do you know what that one's called? Okay, and and you and you ba- and basically like in in its fully extracted mode, you have you have to like squeeze the the four the two prongs in to fit your phone in. Then when you let go of it, springs basically tighten around the phone. It's like the best car mount in the world that isn't a magnet. I've never used a magnet uh, mount. I'll have to look it up and maybe is it R A M? Yes, a Ram mount. Ram mount. Okay. Yeah, Burke says they're awesome for motorcycles. Um, but yeah, and it looks like Ram has a whole bunch of uh, different styles. It's rammount.com. I'm looking for a very specific one. I'll see if I can find it. Maybe by the end of the episode, I'll have it for you. But if you have to go non-magnet or whatever, I would recommend you definitely check check that out. Yeah, this is the site. I'll see if I can find the specific one and I'll get back to you on that. Oh, oh, down the bottom left corner. Yeah, lower left corner. That's oh, the one. Oh, that's pretty. And uh, it's awesome. So you you grab those little prongs and you pull them together and that allows your phone to kind of go in. And so in essence, it works with all different sizes really easily. Um, it just, it, it works really well and it's super durable and everything. It, yep. And you just kind of mount it to either your, your windshield or your um, your vent. I think you could probably do that. I never do that though, do you? I don't. I don't like the vent because then, when it on a cold day, it's like blowing heat at you. Yeah. Um, on a hot day, it's blowing oh, air conditioning, it. and you're not getting the air conditioning. But yeah, Prawn says if it's a simple vent mount, I have a vent mount too. I'll, I'll try that. Oh, you can put them in the ashtray sometimes too. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, you can play guitar with it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, anyways, so I would recommend that loaded arms. Yeah. It's, it's really, really well done. Um, if you have to go non-magnet. So yeah, we had a lot of recommendations and someone else recommended one that was also a Chi charger. Oh, a mount that also charges. That would be nice. You you drop it into your car mount and then Mm -hmm. it's doing the wireless charging at the same time. And it's true that most of the time I probably uh, don't need a mount. Really, I mean, I could say I need it for directions, but I also have my directions on my watch, so yeah. I can I can use that too. So, yeah. but show us how you watch or listen. Uh, you don't have to include an excellent tip as Sean did, but you can uh, record a video or take a picture of yourself or your setup. We love the videos. Post it on Instagram, Google Plus, Twitter, or Facebook. You can also email us at tnt at twit.tv. Yeah. If you post it on social media, use the hashtag How I Watch TNT. That's how we'll find it. And finally, Engadget says a new law in France requires disclosure for all images of models that have been photoshopped. There's no law like this on the books in the U.S., but that hasn't stopped stock photo company Getty for banning photoshopped images of models anyway. Effective October 1st, Getty amended its creative stills submission requirements to restrict depiction of models whose body shapes have been retouched to make them look thinner or larger. Now you're free to change their hair color, their nose shape, skin, or blemishes. Uh, This is, yeah, one small step uh, for models, one giant leap for young people who judge themselves against models or something like that. Uh, But a lot of young people these days are judging themselves against their friends' filtered Snapchat photos. So we still got a long way to go on this. Yeah, and and those, yeah, that's happening automatically. I don't know, like how how do we feel about the the, the powers of, of Photoshop? I mean. On one hand, I'm sure there I'm sure there are some models that are happy about what Photoshop can do. Mm-hmm. I've know I've heard from a lot of models, a lot of people who are photographed that and there's one example in the San Gar- in Gadget Zend- article yeah. Zendaya. where it's like, you know, they do a photo shoot and then they see how it is presented on the site or in the publication. And they're like, eh, wait a minute, what did you do there? And in this case, they ended up reversing it. And the right uh, side photo is the original. The left side was the retouch that ended up, you know, and you, as you can see, it was kind of slimmed down. So, I mean... I, Photoshop is a very powerful tool and I would I would argue that it's not the kind of thing that you say it's a blunt object and no you can't do this on photographs anymore but at the very least man if if your marketing team or whatever you're you're creating materials based around a professional you know like a somebody that's in 
uh, a subject that's being photographed and you're deciding to do this, like, I feel like that's something that they should know. Yeah. And, and probably sooner rather than later because you're you're messing with their likelihood and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and also other people's expectations of how they look. And God, that can be so dis like disheartening. But. Oh yeah. It's horrible. I mean, it's, it's by far the, the, not the worst thing that happens when, you know, you're an actress or a model. Um, but it is pretty bad. I mean, I've heard many, many, you know, actors talk about how, oh, I had no idea. And then I suddenly right. saw the cover of, in a, that is not how I look. And you're creating this false image of me that, and you know, and nobody wants to be part of that, like making people feel like they have to, um, you know, look a certain way or be a certain way in order to feel good about themselves. No one wants to be part of that. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, you know, the picture of Zendaya that we were showing, like, I, I love her. She's great. She was in Spider-Man, of course, and she's a great actress. And, uh, and she's also beautiful in both pictures. Yeah, the know, other one looks right? weird. Like she's young and beautiful and still uh, probably like beyond what, you know, I can still see a teenage girl look at that and say like, oh, I could never be that. So I think the bigger pro, it's a small, it's a small fix. Like I, I love that Getty Images is doing this. They didn't yeah. have to. It's one of those moments where yes, they're doing it to get some press. They're the biggest, um, you know, stock photo uh, place out there. They're in the in the world, I think. So, but they're doing it to get some press, but for a good reason. Like I think it's it's great when a company can say like, hey, we can get our name out there for doing something that's of you know participates us in a small way towards trying to uh, make people feel better about themselves in this world where we're constantly being bombarded with unreal images yeah. of, of people. I know oh, that, I know it's worse. I mean, I know it's, it's bad for boys too. And I know it's getting worse for boys. Um, it's not just a problem with girls, but I have to say it's probably a bigger problem with girls at this point still. Yeah. And, and getting images is so, such a big, um, part of this, of this industry that them making that change is actually a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's good. Mm -hmm. I approve it as well. TNT records live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, 2300 UTC at twit.tv slash live. You can be part of the show by emailing us tnt at twit.tv. Leave us a short voicemail at 260-TNT-SHOW and finding us on Twitter. All you have to do is look for at Tech News Today TV. Subscribe to our show at twit.tv slash TNT. Subscribe for yourself. Subscribe for your friends. Subscribe to that person sitting next to you on the train. Just slip the phone out of their pocket, you know, and then back. I'm just kidding. Don't do ask that. permissions. Yeah. Ask permission before you do that to that yeah. random stranger. When you're, <laughs> can I just have your phone for a second? I just want to subscribe you to something. <laughs> Try it. And if it works, let me know on Twitter. I'm at Megan Maroney. And I'm at Jason Howell. Uh, thanks to our technical director and editor, Kevin. Uh, thanks to Burke for helping out in the studio and occasional Burke chat. Thanks to you, whoever you are. And we love each and every one of you for talking tech with us today. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.